Hey everyone, this is James Lopez, a producer with Gearbox Software. Hey, and I'm Steve Mandy jones I'm a gameplay designer at 2K Australia. And we're here today to show you uh, some of the side missions for Borderlands, the pre-sequel. Brilliant. On Xbox achievements. Brilliant. <laughs> and PlayStation trophies. And PlayStation trophies. <laughs> yes, yeah, you got to get them both in. Okay. Otherwise they fight each other and it never ends well. <laughs> uh, so, PlayStation trophies are going to be pissed whenever they see the, all the Xbox prompts. Oh, they'll be fine. They'll be fine. <laughs> they can get over that, right? Alright, so... Um, you are playing as uh, Claptrap and Athena. Uh, are you guys already kind of familiar with the, the sort of archetypes for, for those characters? Uh, no, tennis. All right, yes. so, so Claptrap is sort of our chaos in a can kind of concept that um, he, he has this uh, action ability called vaulthunter.exe um, that allows, uh, that will randomly choose a vault hunter action ability that, that is sort of based on the current situation. So. Um, it's, it's a little random in the sense that you might get Meet Unicycle, which is Claptrap's version of, of Krieg from Borderlands 2. Um, or, you know, you might have Blight Trap, where he's more like, um, more like a siren skills. Uh, but the game is sort of analyzing the situation and trying to pick something that's appropriate, but it might not be always what you're expecting it to be. Um, and you can just kind of spec into the trees a little bit. You have 13 skill points, so you're not going to get super deep. But you can get about halfway through a tree. Uh, with that, or you can kind of smatter around however you please. Uh, any of these, any of these squares that have a blue outline around them are things that are being that will be modified by your class mod. So if you put one skill point in there, you will get extra uh, skill points allocated into it as well. So it allows you to be a little more adventurous with a uh, with your layout. Um, for Athena, she's uh, sort of a an aggressive tank concept. She has um, well, Steve, why don't you tell them about about Athena? Yeah, sure. Um... So Athena is the, the gladiator, obviously, and her action skill is the kinetic aspis. So uh, that's basically her personal shield that she can bring up that blocks, blocks all frontal damage. It absorbs that damage, and then you can throw the shield out, and it deals double that damage back to your target. So basically being able to give yourself full invulnerability from a certain direction is very powerful, but you sort of need to think about your positioning, um, because if they get behind you, they're going to be able to hit you. So then she has some... Uh, her skill trees will sort of focus on boosting up the Aspis with some nice defensive or co-op buffs or she's also got some uh, nice melee or elemental offensive trees that are really powerful as well because she can afford to be quite aggressive due to the fact she has the Aspis to you know, just give her that really strong protection as well. So she's quite, quite a diverse character for how you want to build her. Mm -hmm. Right, okay. You said all that, and you're dying the first five minutes. You're yeah. really embarrassed. Yeah. You no, know, really. The the key is with her that you want to you want to run in because as you're, the more damage you absorb, the the more lethal your shield will become. Um, but you're so you don't want to just kind of stand still. You want to get in front of things. Um, as claptrap, uh, you can pretty much kind of play however you want to. the The key, the key to playing as him is that um, whatever. Whatever the Vault Hunter EXE chooses, uh, once you kind of understand how that one works, you just kind of need to be agile yeah. with it and just kind of adjust to it. Because uh, you might really be hoping for, um, you know, your you know Ax Axon's version, which would be like a little clap trap that's shooting off rockets. But you might not get that. You might get rubber ducky mode. Okay. And, you know, <laughs> and so like if you get that, you're going to be bouncing nonstop. So you should use a slam attack. Okay. Uh, I'm just having fun watching myself and other people's screens. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, yeah. Alright, so where are we now then? Alright, so right now we're in Concordia, which is uh, the first major hub that you'll encounter in the pre-sequel. Um, so this is very early on in the game. Um, we're here to collect some side missions, so we can kind of run around and show you a little more of the character of the game. Because so far, um, everything that we've shown for the pre-sequel is really focused on uh, combat, the character skills, all that fun stuff. Um, uh, and so now we're going to show a little more of the, uh, the some of the other fun aspects. All right, lead the way. All right. So should we start off with the new grinders mission? Yeah, let's do the grinders mission. So we're going to follow Steve. Yeah, I think okay. the grinders mission is given uh, to us just over in here by a character we've. Uh, I think we briefly met her before. Her name is Janie Springs. She's one of our new characters in the pre sequel. Uh, so she's in here if uh, one of the guests would like to grab the mission of her. Idle hands. I got some. Grinders, right? Yes. Yep. 
My grinder, Bessie, finally died and I need to scrounge up a couple of spare parts. So the grinder is basically a mission that is uh, introducing one of our new features in Borderline the Pre-Sequel, which is called the grinder, which we'll be able to have a look at after we complete this mission. It's stolen, so it's not like you'll be robbing honest folk. The first one's on the back of a buggy. I'm sending the coordinates to your Echo. Let's go shopping. Okay, yeah. Mind is a real machine. Based on some dial tech that it came my way a while ago. us our first objective now, which is to destroy the scavenger buggy because they've uh, stolen uh, some pieces required for the, from the grinder. So uh, we've got our objectives marked on the minimap so we can head off and get started. All awesome. right, let's do this. As we're running along, I'll try to give you like a very brief tutorial in the gameplay because um, I'm sure you guys are familiar with sort of the, the basic way of playing uh, first-person shooters, but we do have uh, two new key features that are worth showing here in a safe spot, uh, which is the oxygen system, which allows you to uh, do a variety of things, but uh, predominantly uh, the big one is that you can do double jumps. You press A, and then you press again, and you'll hear that little rushing away of air. That's using your O2, which is the gray, me uh, the gray meter at the bottom. Um, so whenever you're inside of an area with oxygen, it'll replenish on its own, but out in thin atmosphere, it'll slowly tick down. Um, this is really cool because you can jump higher and you can jump farther. Uh, you can double jump forward also, or you can uh, hold A after you jump for just like A and just hold that down and you'll go much farther. Um, at the height of your jump, at the very top of it, you'll want to press slam, which is going to be the crouch button. Um, and what this does, this will do a, a, a small AOE around you that will allow you to do damage, no, sorry, damage on impact to enemies, but you can also kind of shove them back. Okay. So uh, if you get kind of bum rushed by a bunch of enemies, take a second, do a slam, shove them back so you can kind of regain control of the uh, combat. It's a good thing to do while you're reloading as well because normally you, so yeah. you can't damage them while you're reloading, you can throw in a couple of quick slams to you know, keep dealing out the damage. Exactly, that's a great point. We could travel if Lee wasn't in there. Oh, come on, Lee. Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa done you're in the menu. We're trying to fast travel. Right, right. How dare you? <laughs> I forgot to spend points. Hey, you, you guys should spend your skill points. Oh, yeah, I've not done that either. Okay. That's oh, all right. We'll have a chance to do that now. Yeah, we'll still be in a safe spot when we come in, so just take a second and put those in. There we go. I've chosen a few points in the uh, Cyber Commando tree for Wilhelm because. Uh, uh, my favorite thing about this skill tree is he actually replaces parts of his uh, his body with mechanical bits. So I've got the power fist, which allows me to uh, have this cool robotic punch. One of my favorite things in the game. So you know the worst thing about playing in this kind of environment is I usually spend hours mm -hmm. agonizing over which gun to have and which thing to do. That's part of the fun of Borderlands for me. But now I've got to make a choice quick. Yeah, unfortunately, you, you only have 40 minutes with us. Uh, <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't make for the best video. I could pick one, one gun in 40 work. minutes, I reckon. So which which tree would you recommend for Claptra? Um, so the middle one is very much sort of like uh, co-op focused. Uh, the left one focuses uh, predominantly on explosive damage, especially when it comes to using uh, guns that don't have any elementals on them. Now we've given you a pretty good loadout of weapons, so um, you may want to focus more on I Love You Guys or Fragmented Frag Trap. Uh, Frag Trap uh, has these other things called subroutines. Uh, they are not... Uh, the, instead of Vault Hunter skills, you can also have these other action packages that pop up um, that are unlocked depending on what you are um, on what you invest into. So for gun subroutines, uh, every now and then they'll say like SMG subroutine, and what that means is that you need to equip an SMG because you'll do more damage with it, but you'll do less damage with other guns. So there's a little bit of agility there. But then you also have other things. Let's see here. Take a look at this one. Where are you? Uh, as we go through here, you, you should see some, yeah, there we go, action package, one-shot wonder. So um, an action package is something that is something other than a Vault Hunter skill that you could also um, use in the moment. Uh, in this case, one-shot wonder will just, um, the second you pull the trigger, it empties your magazine. So you want to make sure that you're being accurate, but you'll okay. do a massive amount of damage with just one, you know, with one click. No, we'll try that one. There are skills of you taking, James. Uh, I went into the Rifle Woman, um, because the Rifle Woman tree is very much that sort of classic gunslinger idea of hip fire, run and gun. Um, we've actually tweaked the, um, the hip fire accuracy in general in the pre-sequel because, um, because we kind of noticed that in the previous games it was a bit unforgiving. Uh, you really needed to kind of focus on uh, using the iron sights or zooming in to shoot. 
Uh, so we kind of want to get, you know, be a little less rigid with uh, with our expectation of how you play the game. But with uh, that stack with the rifle woman, my hip fire is going to be very accurate, um, which is really cool because um, I don't just run and gun. And, you know, things like shotguns really benefit from it, especially. There's no time for aiming. Yeah. All right, let's go and kill some things. Ooh, well, uh, our mission, we're out in the moon, the moon surface here, uh, area of the game called Triton Flats, and I think we've got a little distance to travel to find our objective, so it's a good opportunity to grab ourselves some vehicles. Yeah, so we're going to come over here to the Moon Zoomy, which uh, is basically the moon version of a catcher ride. Um, and we're going to grab... Well, we've got both the vehicles unlocked. So we've got the Moon Buggy or the Stingray. Um, the Stingray is probably our most unique new vehicle. It's actually a single-person vehicle. It's like a hover bike. Um, okay. So would you guys like to grab some of those? Yes, cool. let's do that. We can actually have four of those. Yeah, this is really cool for us because um, in the previous games, you could only have two vehicles out. Uh, but with the Stingray, you can have one for each player in the game, which is really fun. Yeah. I'll just deploy vehicles. Yep. Oops, so we've got four Stingrays ready to go. Oh, what? So you'll notice that, you have the, that it's a much lighter weight vehicle. There's a, that hovering is definitely a big part of it. Um, it still works the same way as, as other vehicles in the sense that you have your boost, which is going to be um, it's going to be that, that left bumper. Um, but this is uh, not just a forward boost, but a vertical boost also. So um, if you hold it, you'll be able to go like much higher up in the air. No slam on this though. Well, <laughs> yes, there is. If you, yeah, press you, right you, press right the, you press the left bumper to boost, and, and right bumper brings you back down, and you can uh, pancake your enemies. So this is actually our objective here. This grinder buggy is the one with the, the grinder parts we need to recover, so we need to take him out. I didn't realize what I was doing for a second there, and I then I realized that, that my vehicle was being pulverized. <laughs> so I actually need somebody to come okay, over here. And and this is really neat because in addition to the normal way of restoring, uh, we can also provide with oxygen. So it's not just about double jumps. Um, using oxygen is actually sort of an intelligent decision that you can make on, you know, uh, how you want to use it. You can use it for, some, for, your, uh, for your double jumps, for your slams, all that good stuff. You can also use it to revive players faster. Um, so we kind of want it to feel like it's a big part of your uh, of your combat system. So I'm going to run back and get a vehicle. We've got some uh, sugar rats appearing here, which is sort of these big um, flying hive creatures that spawn extra little flyers called uh, rathens and come and sort of swarm you. So we killed the grinder bug and it looks like we've picked up the bit of loot we needed from it. Um, which means we can actually head back and uh, to our next objective. You got yourself a new vehicle, James? No, but I'm close. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of embarrassing that I'm the one that went down first. Yeah, you're because, the best one to die. You know, I've been on this game the long, this franchise yeah. the longest and I just went down first. I thought it'd be Lee as well. <laughs> I'm quite just keeping out of the way. <laughs> All right. Yeah, you guys came back. Also, my brain, I've been playing loads of Destiny, and my brain thinks, and my hands think I'm still playing that. <laughs> so I might just hide in the corner. A little bit of muscle memory. Yeah. Oh, no. There's a good chance here for a bit of a jump. You might not want to follow James, though. I made it. I made it, but I did have to be a little, uh, a little creative. I'll go for it. Yeah. Pressure boost. Uh, nice. There you, well there you go. Oh, what's this? We got some more sugar rats here. So you got two weapons on your stingray. The right right trigger is your laser gun, and the um, left trigger is the flak cannon, which is a good sort of area of effect explosive weapon. It's good at taking out the little rathids that these sugar rats swarm. So have you guys had a chance to play Destiny yet? Uh, not yet. Because, no. I mean, it's a co-op game in the same kind of mold, but obviously less players, which is odd choice. Well, it's only like one less. Yeah, but I mean, it's who, who plays with two other people, right? It's four players. It's built. That's what co-op is, right? Definitely is for us. Yeah. I'm not 
I'll spend them on sugar rats, and I forgot what we actually have an objective here. Yeah, should we, uh, uh, I think we need to head down this little hill here. Uh, oh, what's, uh, what's Dark Siders? I just stopped. There was a, a shop or a location that was Dark Siders. What's that? Yeah, so Dark Siders is a, uh, is a group of bandits uh, on the moon. They're called Scads, uh, short for scavengers. Um, it's a, it's a scav encampment that's called the Dark Siders. And they are, you know, edgy and moody, and they have cool visuals around their base. And they have some really bad jump, uh, really bad puns also. Which is right up my alley. I love bad jokes. Right, I've got no uh, Yeah, we have got no So I think there's a jump pad just over here. Right? Yeah, right, you are. And so the, just, yeah. the jump pads are really cool. This is another new feature um, because we. We knew that we wanted to really kind of emphasize the low gravity nature of, uh, of Elpis's, uh, which is uh, Pandora's moon, uh, Elpis's surface. So we kind of want to mess around with the low gravity, and we knew that if we're going to be doing these double jumps and all these kind of like cool slow motion jumps uh, from the low gravity, we also want to do uh, jump pads as well. Yeah, and also your slam does more damage the higher you do it from. So if you're combining that with jump pads, you can actually do quite a lot of damage with these big slams. We're going to move on into Stanton's liver. Have you perfected the art of demo playing? Playing games in a demo where you pan slowly around <laughs> and you show. <laughs> There's an art to that. Yeah, when, when we first entered the uh, the previous map, the first thing I did was kind of do like a pan across. <laughs> right. Look at all this beautiful scenery. And as you walk and it's just like, just kind of panning up like that. It's like, wow. It's like, oh, look, it's the happy area for the healing station up in the sky. And that's kind of cool because like, it's easy to miss the helo station at first just because of all the rocks, but the second you look up, it's like, oh wow, there's a giant space station right above me. We've also got these uh, cryovines here, which, which you guys may have spotted, which are a new elemental uh, plant in the pre sequel um, If you get too close to it, it's going to, it's going to freeze you. Okay. Um, they sort of, you can shoot them to make them uh, do a big freeze attack, and then they slowly recharge and then they'll do it again. But you can use them against your enemies, which is cool. They slam. How do you slam again? Uh, just by, you press the crouch button um, at the apex of your jump. Ah, okay. We've got a little badass scab up here with the jetpack flying around. So you, the player's not the only, um, the only people who can spend their time in the air. You've got enemies with jetpacks as well. They've got their own tricks for you. I'm assuming we can uh, expect more and more guns in uh, this game Absolutely. than usual. Absolutely. Well, you know, we uh, we've added a lot to the game. So we have the cryo elemental, which is the uh, essentially an ice elemental. Um, so we have you know more guns right there just for the uh, for the new elemental type. Uh, we also have os kits, which are um, basically O2 kits, uh, which will augment your 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 jumping, your slamming, all that good stuff. Um, so, and we also have lasers, which are really cool. Um, just you know, these ener energy beam attacks uh, that will represent all of the different elemental types. So we've added a few more bazillion guns to the game. <laughs> the, the lasers are really cool as well because they're, they're not just one class of weapons. There's actually four different types of lasers. You've got um, sort of your your permanent beam lasers, like your Ghostbusters ones, or you've got um, the Hyperion ones have a railgun type shot, or maybe you've got like stormtrooper style blaster ones as well. So the, the laser type actually has a whole lot of extra variety within it, um, just to make it that much more interesting to find the perfect laser for your kind of playstyle. Did you ever consider letting people carry their characters over? Because presumably people have invested hundreds of hours into their Borderlands 2 kind of build. Is there, there no way that you can provide some kind of through line? I know it's set before and there's some narrative issues, but are there technical issues for it as well? I think it's more just about um, us wanting to tell a different story each time sort of thing. And uh, you know, player progression, uh, character progression matters a great deal. And you know, uh, if, if you just kind of jump into a, like let's say you imported over your Mordecai character into the pre-sequel, even if it was just the, the, um, 
progression for a new character, you're going to come in so overpowered uh, that it would just essentially break the pacing. Um, really, kind of, kind of like a, that sort of you know, you end up with a sort of god mode that makes the game actually considerably less fun. Um, you know, we're always trying to have just the right amount of balance to the combat so that it's challenging, but you know, not like unreasonable. Also, I got gotcha. you. There you go, buddy. Thank you. <laughs> uh, but you know, sure, like it's it's a cool idea. It's, it's one that we that we've kicked around in the past. Um, but it's, it's an awkward problem to solve, though, right? Yeah. So I'm not sure if you guys noticed, but um, we've actually got an area of oxygen here now. You can sort of see the bubble over this whole um, area. It's actually provided by this uh, um, generator on top of the shipping crate here, which I actually switched on when we got here. So okay. you can actually switch it off and on to um, either uh, enable or disable the oxygen in the area, which um, obviously the, the benefit of that is it can recharge your oxygen, but um, if there's oxygen, it means you can ignite enemies with your fire weapons, so you can make tactical choices. Um, based on that, whether you want oxygen or not. You can also disable or enable it with shock weapons by shooting it. So does the oxygen play a big part in the game then? Oh, absolutely. Uh, it's a, a very thoroughly integrated system. Um, you know, it, it was important for us that it not just be some sort of resource that you're just managing that is basically like another health bar. Um, it's, a feat, you know, it, it's really a weapon. Um, yeah, it is something that you can lose over time, but uh, you know, I can turn off this this uh, oxygen generator here, and any scab that loses his O2 bubble uh, will slowly asphyxiate over time. Um, having the oxygen off will uh, prevent you from being able to be set on fire, which is really nice because you know uh, elemental damage is a huge part of, uh, of the Borderlands combat loop. Um, but if I also decide that I want to be able to set enemies on fire, I can just turn this oxygen generator back on, and then use my flame element elemental guns inside of it. Uh, there's also the ability to revive players, to do your slam, to do your double jump. Um, it's a very big part of the game. Yeah, and, and Oz kits will often have uh, special effects that may depend on your oxygen. Like there are some that will give you bonuses based on how high your oxygen is, and some that will actually give you more if your oxygen is low. So those will then influence how you uh, choose to play the game with the oxygen as well. I think one of my favorite things is whenever I get um, an Oz kit that has uh, a that has um, cryo damage. On it, because then you know every time you slam, you're trying, you're starting to freeze enemies, which is really helpful because it helps you manage the battlefield a little more. Yeah. So claptrap's special power. What is it? Uh, Vault Hunter uh, which is essentially um, a software modification that Jack has done on the claptrap to basically make him useful. Um, because you know in the past, claptrap's sole purpose was to open doors, and he wasn't even really all that great at it. Um, <laughs> but, you know, it, uh, Jack is trying to weaponize Claptrap to see if that makes him um, any more useful. And so, you know, as we know, Jack has a has an unusual understand, uh, understanding of Pandora and its, uh, and its activities. So he knows a lot about the Vault Hunters, and so he sets up Claptrap to kind of mimic their abilities. Uh, he doesn't mimic it very well, though, because the upgrade isn't complete. Uh, he even kind of looks at... Uh, the Vault Hunter EXE uh, upgrade as, as a bit of a uh, as a bit of malware, just because it's not functioning correctly. Um, but uh, it's really cool because it, it makes Claptrap far more powerful than he would be otherwise. We didn't really want to make a game where Claptrap just opened doors for you. Yeah. So I think uh, up on the roof of this area, we've got uh, our grinder that we need to um, we need to find. Got Athena here. If you want to give it a punch. Yeah, the old Fonzie way of solving a problem. Yeah. <laughs> Got a little special uh, sort of character midget up here we need to do as well. That's what for me. Sorry, I was busy running around <laughs> grabbing the loot. Yeah, yeah, sort of. Sort of? Sorry. That's okay. I saw an opportunity and I was like, yeah, I'm on that rocket launcher. Yeah, that's, that's what Borderlands is about. <laughs> Alright. 
Yeah, there's the detonator. There's some explosives on the ground now. Boop. Yeah, I actually want to get, kind of want to go to a certain distance. How safe, safe? That's about pretty safe. You be the judge. I always like to get a little bit closer, you know, just so you can see the explosion. And I hear, I hear Athena gasping for air. Oh, wait, so why don't you follow me over here, Lee? Lee? Oh, we're going to lose fight. Oh, yeah, 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 so, yeah, yeah. Just because you're out of oxygen, I don't want you to die. I think there I had my headphones on, I thought, ooh, look, it's going dark. <laughs> 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 that looks fun. Yeah, I know, so now that, we've, now that we've refilled your O2, you can come back out here and blow this thing up. All right. This very high-tech... Uh, demolition thing that looks like it's straight out of the 1800s. Yeah, the, the leading to the <laughs> yeah. He's standing. Here, that's okay. There we go. Double jumping is so much. More fun than just walking. Yes. Just yeah. sort of double jump everywhere. Yeah, those are the rules. It's a lot of fun. It's faster as well, so it's a good, good method to travel around. I'm definitely spoiled by it because, um, you know, we we still do a lot of comparison between the pre sequel and the other Borderlands games, so sometimes we go back and play them to kind of see, like, you know, does this, does this feel Borderlands? And, it, you know, to us, it, it definitely does, but we're also now at the point where I don't like going back and playing the other games as so much because I miss my double jump in my swing. Yeah, yeah. yeah, absolutely. It, it becomes muscle memory, so you're just uh, trying, to, <laughs> trying to do these double jumps and slams all the time. Yeah, or if you have to backtrack, and it's like, I can't double jump to get through here faster? Yeah. Lame. Yeah, it's definitely a lot quicker as well, right? Because, I mean, look at this, where I'm flying. Yeah, it, like, mm. it doesn't give you too much sort of vertical velocity, but it will definitely give you a sort of horizontal boost as well as more sort of air control, so you can actually use it to turn around in the air as well, which you mm -hmm. normally can't do too quickly. Well, the problem is that you use the oxygen up quite quickly though when you do that. Yeah. It does. Um, fortunately, we, we tend to have smatterings of uh, little like air geysers along the way. Some of them are very small where you just kind of see like a little trail in the distance. Um, some are just, just jets of air just flying out of the ground. Um, and both will, will refill your oxygen. Um, but the ones that are coming out very strongly will actually uh, basically act as jump pads and allow you to, you know, get some verticality in case you want to do a slam. Should we uh, take some wing buggies back? Yeah, definitely. So you see, like Dan over here, this is one of our small air vents over by uh, over by me. <laughs> Who's who? Oh, there we go. Oh, I see. So we have these all over the place, but we also have others that are hidden underneath the rocks, and you'll see like these huge like gushes of air trying to come out. If you break those rocks open whenever you see them, you'll be able to just launch yourself into the air. Okay, so you just kind of stand above it, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you should see your oxygen refill quite quickly. All right, so I'm writing, I'm writing shoddy on this one. Uh, I'm also uh, shooting uh, your car. Uh, uh, Slut trap, would you like to go together? Yeah, let's do it. There we go. All right, people James. I'm, oh, I'm not driving. Oh, you're getting, I'm, I'm driving. driving. I'm leading the way. Awesome. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing can go wrong. I thought you were about to go into lava. <laughs> <laughs> no confidence in you, Lee. <laughs> we want to get around. How do we get around? Oh, oh, there's, there's a bridge right ahead. Oh, we go. You're doing great. Yeah. I feel like it. Oh, traffic. We're going to go get to the left? Yep. Yeah. You've got your afterburner and handbrake on, on this, similar to the one of the Borderlands 2. Uh, <laughs> so who's in the uh, laser moon buggy? Uh, that's me. Uh, the, no, the, the enemy one? The one is oh. Oh, okay. Shoot that thing quickly. There we go. I don't even see it.
They smell like pan, pan, do, pan how do you pronounce that? Pandora 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 Is it the same guy? Is it Anthony Birch who's writing this uh, game? It is, it is, it is one of our writers. We've also, we've also got a couple of writers, um, uh, down at 2K Australia, who, who contributed as well, Morris Suckling and Merrick Walton. I was going to say, you've got quite an Australian yeah, tone. They've, 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 they've done a great job in setting a lot of uh, Australian humour and just some di different spins on, on a lot of modern things. So, Drongo, right? You, you use that word more Yeah, yeah. How Australian is it? Do they say Drongo? Did I yeah. say galah? There's a fair bit. Um, I think there's a lot of stuff like that. Maybe not those ones specifically, but uh, you won't be disappointed. How easy is it to write a game basically in America and Australia? Uh, pretty easy, I guess. I mean, there, there's a certain amount of um, challenge just in the timing because we, we are so, you know, we're several hours apart from each other. Yeah, there, um, there are plenty of visits where, where the Gearbox guys would come down and spend a couple of weeks with us and they could, you know, get in a room together and, you know, work together on the story, and that, which, which helps a lot. And we have video, you know, we have all the abilities of modern era, you know, we'll do plenty of video conference calls and all that kind of stuff. But I think the best stuff really came, came out of whenever we spend time together. You know, we, I think we've, we have somebody visiting, you know, one of the teams at, I think, like an average like every other one. Yeah, there's either some, someone from 2K over at Gearbox or someone from Gearbox over at 2K Australia. Yeah. Pretty much all the time. Oh, wow. Yeah. I see Lee is focusing on getting the, uh, I want to <laughs> on the slot machine. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess, Dan, if you want to go ahead and turn in the, uh, you know, turn those in. All right, so this is the grinder machine. Uh, and what's really cool about this is um, instead of just selling um, your old junk, or if you're trying to decide if something's worth picking up, uh, the answer is now that it, it definitely is because you can take uh, take your gear that you don't want over to the grinder, and you can turn them in to make something um, at least as good, if not better. Okay. And we also have this other thing called moonstones, um, which basically uh, kind of replace iridium uh, because narratively speaking, iridium hasn't really happened yet. Um, and you uh, can use the moonstones to augment the uh, your odds of getting something better. In some cases, you'll get moonshine. Uh, you want to tell us a little bit about moonshine? Yeah, so, so moonshine is basically an attachment that can spawn on your weapon that gives it some sort of extra special effect. Um, uh, for example, it might give you a, an attachment that restores some of your shield every time you kill an enemy. So uh, basically, they can be attached to any normal weapon, and it just adds like that extra little bit of interesting gameplay to it. So it just helps adds that extra level to the game of you know finding the ultimate weapon and then getting a cool moonshine attachment on it. Just makes it really interesting and it's a nice way to spend your moonstones as well. So how does the grinder work? So I've put some weapons in it. Yeah, so you put three weapons in and then you can um, uh, basically you need a the, the grinder sort of has recipes like you can't just throw random oh, really? things in okay. there. It, it's kind of you've got to discover the combinations. That okay, so that's not going to work. Um, yeah, so I think if you throw three of the same weapon type in there, you should be able to do a basic basic level grind. But there's also um, other ones where you might combine, say, two types of guns with a grenade mod or something, and that will give you a specific output. Like if you want to get like a shotgun or a sniper rifle specifically. Yeah. Um, and and generally, like if you, if you put in weapons of the same rarity, you will at least get the same rarity back, but a chance of increasing the rarity as well. I haven't got three weapons at the same time. That's all right, because between us, we, sh we can pull our resources. Okay, so I'll put them in, and then other people can go in and then just switch them around, right? Well, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drop some for you. Okay. Maybe keep that shot. <laughs> so I am dropping a couple of uh, assault rifles. Oh, I should have another assault rifle. I'll drop an assault rifle for you as well. Ladies, I think it needs to be three of the same color, doesn't it, Steve? Uh, yeah. Oh, does it? Okay. So, we've probably oh, got well. plenty of purple assault rifles between us. I think Springs actually gave us some sample weapons to use, which someone has already grabbed. Oh, I really? Mean, I mean, I don't know who that would be, but I mean, I found some stuff on a table. Oh, yeah, that would be. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, oh, well, well done, James. It's like, oh, <laughs> oh, wait, I did one. So, <laughs> yeah, there's three white assault rifles that Springs has provided for 
Uh, so you're trying to you're trying to grind two ARs in one shotgun. You'll need to swap out the shotgun. Oh, it says I can grind it. Then. Oh, oh yeah, that means you can. So you you okay. found a combination there. So you know it better than us. Apparently. Well, I just because I was trying before, yeah. just swapping yeah, so, it out. So, so the button down there will light up if it's a valid grind, which you found now. Oh jeez, first move five buttons on. Nice. So oh yeah, that's good. Cause you got it? A, yeah, because you got yeah, a, a nice shock assault rifle. Yeah, you, oh, okay. it's like not only did you get a blue gun out of it, but you got one that has uh, has an elemental on, which is really handy. Yeah. Oh, cool. Now you're early on. It's going to be uh, the more typical experience would be something like grinding a bunch of whites. Um, yeah, but you know, those three. Yeah. yeah, but you know, if you uh, if you have if you grind those and you have uh, something like. Uh, Um, you know, if you've got enough move zones, you have a uh, you know, better chance of getting something good yeah. out of it. Getting grind three white and silver rifles here. So my subroutine thing came up, to, so should I use the weapon that it says? Yes. Okay, so like I, I ground, I, I put three whites uh, into it, um, and I used a moonstone, yeah. and so I, I actually have a, a yeah, check this thing out. Oh, nice. So um, every kill will will give me back three percent of my shields, which is really handy. Especially like you know, if you go to an area that has like five or six scabs, you know, clear them out, you get a good chunk of your shields back. Yeah. And you can also see the, the gun looks a bit different too because it's got the chain, it's got this sort of uh, funky uh, moonstone material on it, so it actually visually looks different too. Yeah, it's pretty bad. So this countdown timer on my screen. All right, so that that's the subroutine so countdown. So now that. I should use handguns. Is that what you're saying, right? I believe that one's for assault rifles and handguns. Okay. It's definitely more complicated. In a good way. Tactical. That's probably what I'm sure. We can uh, hand in the ground as opposed to spring screens yeah. here. Yeah. Thanks for the help. Gives us uh, customization as a reward. Or would you guys like to try a different side mission now, or if we can do the main story? Up to you guys. Um, I think we should do Torgo. Do you like Mr. Torg? Yeah, we'll go with that, yeah. Alright. Sounds good. That works. He's the weapon dude, right? Yes. The, the weapon that explosions. Okay. It's fancy. That's all I'll show off the, um, the first of the moon maps that the player will, will experience. No. Maybe I haven't been following enough closely, but um, am I right in saying that it's not all set on the moon? Yeah, well, because we are definitely going to make our way up to the Hyperion uh, moon, uh, moon base at some point. Okay. We're never down on Pandora at any point? No. Okay. Now, this is all about the moon. Well, I guess I'm all about how cool space is. Let's travel over to our mission. Yeah. Right. I just love these oh. jump lights. Great. So we're going to take you to uh, Serenity's Waste, which is the first map, uh, the first moon map that you'll be in. Um, this is also where, you know, in the natural progression, you'd go through here to meet Janie, and that's where you do all of your cool oxygen training and all that fun stuff. Um, but, you know, since we don't have that much time, kind of hit the ground running. Uh, so Janie wants us to collect uh, some laser parts. Um, but Mr. Torg has also reached out to us about um, about his concern with laser gear. Uh, for this mission, we have um, we actually have a mission specific weapon. Um, Janie called it a prod gun. Uh, it's Miss Moxie's probe, which is um, a gun that we will use to shoot an enemy called Kragans. And this will be your first time encountering Kragans. Let's
There's a lot of exploding going on right now. <laughs> That's a good thing, though. Oh, yeah. They, they roll up into a pool, like, yeah. Sonic style. Yeah. And then whenever they're, uh, whenever they're finished um, coming out of that, then uh, they'll start attacking you. Want to kind of give you a chance to reorient before we just start slamming with enemies. Peaceful Kraken. It, it won't die. Yeah. Now that's that's okay because right now he's um, the green health bar indicates that he's a essentially a friend or that okay. he's friendly. Can but, we, can so we we're get on him? we're gonna use that fraud gun that Jamie gave us. And we're gonna use it to get his attention. Oh, okay. So um, if you go into your uh, your inventory, which you'll have to get out of the stingray form, Crazy young you press your, your back button. You'll see that there's a mission weapon in the top right. Okay. And just equip that. And then um, you shoot him and you see what happens. There you go. And now he's not friendly. Okay. Now he's now he's angry with you, but we actually need him to roll over this way to uh, clear out some rubble for us. Oh, okay. Taking all of the oh, <laughs> Who's pissing off my cracker? Why are they on me? Leave me alone! <laughs> there you go. Oh, come ah. on. There we go. Oh, they yeah. Antagonize the bottom. There it is. Excellent. Does that mean one of your challenges then to kind of mix the mission types up? Because that's always the problem with first-person shooters these days. It's a oh, lot yeah. of go there, shoot this. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You don't, you don't want every mission to be go there, kill this, fight this. So it's always fun if there's some more more interesting or different things you have to do. And particularly in, in the pre sequel, we've got so many opportunities to to do different things like relating to oxygen or low, low gravity or slamming. Great opportunities to have different missions. Get that features. Is that a tricky thing to do? To mix it up so that you feel like you're not doing the same thing over and over. Well, sure. I mean, I, I think the the challenge is to kind of think about like, um, what are, what are the things that we'd like to see people do, and what do we think is really fun, you know? Uh, because everybody at at the studios, you know, have their have their own idea of what of what fun in a video game is, you know? Yeah. Um, you know, it's not always the same interest, um, and that's cool because we can you know you can bring some variety to to the game that way. Uh, but at the same time, uh, I think the real challenge is making sure that it feels distinctly borderlands each time. Um, but you know, we have such a such a great sort of like catalog of characters to pull from and different things that we can do. Uh, especially now, you know, every time we add features to, the, to a game, it allows us to do a little more um, to kind of keep it fresh. Like there are some missions uh, that focus on using uh, using the slam or being able to use um, being able to use the, the low gravity and oxygen systems. Um, and so that kind of helps us come up with some some inspiration for like what we what we can do to kind of keep it fresh. That way, it's not always just go here, shoot that, turn in the mission. Because you know, even though that is fun, um, <laughs> you know, it is nice to kind of have something to break it up. Now we have a choice, then, right? Yeah, we can either uh, we can either roll the light reactor into the lava and make Mr. Torg happy, or we can turn in the light reactor to springs. Um, they both have funny outcomes. Um, which one is your favorite, Steve? Do you like to turn it into springs? It's, it's always fun to do stuff with Mr. Tog, I think. Oh, almost fun to the, the cannon. That's my vehicle. Oh, I'm sorry. Here you go. No, no. I'm not saying that you stole it. Well, you can actually... Uh, <laughs> oh, there it is. If you uh, walk up to another player's stingray, you can hold down X to digestruct yourself a new one. If, oh, really? If yours is blown up, and you don't, so you don't have to go all the way back to the moon zoom station. I found mine in the end. Oh, excellent. But thank you. Yeah. So which, which, which <coughs> hand in would you guys like to do? Uh, the, the nasty one. The one where we stitch up. <coughs> uh, roll light reactor into lava. All right. Cool. That's over here, isn't it? Yes. I feel like Borderlands isn't a series with 
heroes. It's just mess and really well, that, nasty people. That is kind of the funny twist about it. Is like you're playing as a you know you're playing as a good guy, but it does involve just pulling people up. <laughs> <laughs> Have we done it? It's happening right now. It's happening right now. <laughs> oh, oh, no. 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 <laughs> oh, no. no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> it's happening right now. It's happening right now. <laughs> oh, oh, no. 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 <laughs> 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 I, just, I was getting too close to the edge, I was like, I want to look over. <laughs> Damn it. It's, it's a clutch trap thing to do, you're getting into the character. <laughs> you sent us a thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's pretty cool, I want to stroke back already. Yep. Teleport to him, which is always handy. And there's our thing. Yep. By Mr. Bond. The gent. There you go. And that's a really good shotgun, actually. Really awesome. It might be a little low level for us because we're coming in much higher than yeah. you would typically experience it at. But um, in the main, you know, in the final product, definitely. Uh, do it early on when it's available. I guess let's head back to the important. Yeah. Yeah, there's more than one way in. I like the idea of just leaving my vehicles in front of transitions. Yeah. Just like leave it for someone else to deal with. There's be some ballet guy that goes around parking, <laughs> yeah. parking vehicles all day. <laughs> Because we certainly don't do it. <laughs> like everything's a car park. Yeah. I never get told, just jumping and slamming. Oh, that's awesome. And like, I'm jumping like clean across from where we started. Yeah, you can take like shortcuts and stuff as yeah. you get more, more used to it. Stairs are for chumps. <laughs> Still have a few more missions. Anything you know, like maybe maybe ice with this? Yeah. Maybe we can pick them up with the bounty board. Not sure, actually, let's go check. Nope. So many characters to remember it's difficult. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm like, hmm? Yeah, it's from Nesnina. Oh, great. A, a, okay. new, a new Doctor character in the pre-sequel. That's all we got this mission for us. It's got a bunch of ice holes. <laughs> I'm assuming there's a, a load of secrets then that you've hidden away in little nooks and crannies with this double jump. Yeah. Yeah, because that, that was always one of the fun things in Borderlands. It was to climb up to some obscure location and you know be rewarded by finding a loot, the loot chest there. And uh, obviously with low gravity and double jump, we've had even more opportunities to do that. So the exploration is really fun. Is the one up there? Or am I just trying that jump for nothing? Hey, you just nicked my brain. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Here you go. <laughs> <It's an outrage. laughs> So uh, Lee went over to the uh, oh. the, the golden key chest. Oh, okay. oh, yeah. What I'm doing now, and you just stole it. Oh, that will do. Grab it. Oh, no. Sorry. That's okay. It's oh, in my it? nature. I have no idea, so I'm just going to give you a bunch of stuff. All right. That's that's me saying I'm sorry. Oh, why not you? But uh, when when the guys back home watch this, they'll. Be unsurprised by my behavior. <laughs> <laughs> What's an OS kit? Uh, that's a uh, new piece of equipment in the pre that uh, it basically oh, provides yeah. you with your oxygen supply, okay. and it also um, allows you to slam you and that. 
it defines how much damage your slam does as well, so better eyes gets always more damage. Okay. Um, and there's different types, like for example, you've got I think a clear skies eyes kit, which boosts your damage against airborne targets, which which there are a lot of. There's flying enemies, jetpack enemies, so okay. so that one in particular might help you with that. And there's other ones that boost different things. And it's generally boosts based on like oxygen or whether you're in an atmosphere or a vacuum or whether you're airborne, things like that. Okay. I just gave you the shittiest gun. <laughs> well, never. That's okay because um, we happen also complete one of our uh, many challenges uh, for trading. So you know, get a little more badass ranks in there, so um, so you can kind of use those uh, badass tokens to get some extra skills. I would, I could lie and say that was the plan all along, but truly, really <laughs> I said I didn't. I like taking people's loot. That's a character flaw. Shall we start on this mission then? Yeah, let's do it. Are you guys going to duel? Oh, can we, can we duel here? Yeah, you can duel anywhere. But uh, Athena's in. Alright, now you can do it. Left trap versus Athena, right? Oh, God. Come on! Yeah. Did, did you accept it? Oh, no, I've got a terrible. No, let me get the live weapon. Did you there accept you it? You can just use that. You actually, you actually have the best weapon, which is your uh, your shield. Oh yeah, of course. Why don't you accept the jewel? You, 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 you both have to hit each other with the melee attack. Yeah, there so, you go. Oh. Player is unable to accept the challenge at this time. Why? All right, let's just go away and come back. Maybe it just needs to reset itself. What prompts have you got? <laughs> Press. Uh, let's do oh. this, Dan. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Now, the bright thing would be, as the developer... No, 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 way. don't do that. <laughs> Shit! <laughs> don't even need me to, to take it easy, because you have the white trap right there, which has uh, all these cool elemental effects going on yeah. off of it. And, and he dances. Yeah, of course he dances. And you hear the music playing? Yeah. yeah. It's beautiful. Oh, dance rhythm. <laughs> <laughs> Very sweet dance moves. <laughs> you should see him in real life, mate. He's too... <laughs> He's doing the robot, and he's a robot. Get it? <laughs> <laughs> well, at least start a little jewel then. <laughs> Alright, so we are going to the Frozen Gulch. Yep. Okay. Uh, let's go to this point. Good duel. That's definitely, the, that's definitely the trick. When you're playing this Claptrap, you want to deploy your action skill like the second that the duel is uh, is accepted. That was the plan. Yeah. I was yeah, going to do it on late, I've but never, uh, I, I apologize. I've never done a duel. <laughs> I'm the complete opposite of you. I'm really polite. Like, no, no, you take the gun. It's fine. <laughs> I'll get one later. It'll be okay. Just gonna yeah. offer to fight them for it. <laughs> I'm the kind of guy that will take the gun and then just throw it off the edge. And go, oh, <laughs> sorry, mate. Yeah. I was actually playing. Imagine work working for a man like that. <laughs> <laughs> There's a uh, what, our uh, localization specialist, uh, a guy named Nick Khan. Um, Nick. Uh, was asking me for some for some loot that I that I stole from him, and I go, oh, this loot, and then I just chucked it into the lava. <laughs> I think you two are gonna get him well. <laughs> he scowled, but I think deep down inside, he actually appreciated it for what it was. <laughs> what was it? <laughs> oh, it was blues and purples all the way. Just I'm like, oh, you want these? <laughs> oh, let's go. They've got some uh, missile pod moves now. Yeah. different weapon. Uh, they're just kind of firing all over the place right now, but if there's something to actually shoot at, then it foc it's focusing oh, on the... Oh, no! I was looking at... Yeah. Oh! <laughs> Are we going over the bridge? Um... Oh, I was looking at the wrong marker. That's probably why. I was looking at the mission marker, the exclamation. Oh yeah, the one for uh, saying that you have new missions available. Yeah. Yeah. And then I got stuck. Um, this is why I'm usually the gunner. There we go. Oh, then I just jumped out because I'm like, oh. <laughs> All right, coming back. Usually, I'd be the, the guy to just drive off them. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, mate. <laughs> oh, wow. You're going to 
Yeah, we're gonna have to come down this little, uh, little uh, canyon here. Down here. Yeah, we can actually just hop out. And uh, damn, we're actually gonna run in the opposite direction. Oh, sorry. It's alright. Don't expect you to know where everything is. <laughs> Sorry, even we forget sometimes there's so much in this game, it's hard to, hard to remember everything. Okay, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. Love the way they run. Oh yeah, the, with that sort of that sort of bounding yeah. going on. Yeah. And, and that'll only happen inside of the areas that have um, low gravity. Okay. Time to shatter that bad boy. Who froze it? Uh, I did, I'm using a uh, Frost SMG with my I get the feeling we're quite overpowered here. <laughs> Is that right? Um, we're actually not, I think we're about right. Oh really? Yeah. Or we're just too we're good, right? Maybe one or two levels higher than the whole thing. Not, not really close though. I think the thing is that we're showing up some of our, some of our cooler yeah. gear. Yeah. Get it? Ice okay. guns! It's cooler gear! Yeah, we've got lots of epic and legendary gear which uh, won't, won't be quite as easy to fill up your inventory with in the main game. So you've been playing for a little while. What's that going to do? Can I make it for a second? Yeah. Yeah. Easy. Let's see one of our oxygen generators there, which is just switched on for us. Something that's really cool, just a quick side note, is um, the oxygen generators will respond to shock damage also. So um, if you are seeing one like off in the distance, you can shoot it with a shotgun to uh, to turn on or turn it off ahead of time. Okay. So if you're really dying, it's like quick getting there. Yeah, exactly. When every second counts, just shoot it from the distance yeah. so you just or, run right in. Or if there's in. some enemies hiding under it, you can uh, shoot it out from underneath them. Mm -hmm. Tactics. Oh, no. There's something about the loot. Like, I'm never going to play this build again. I will never. It just won't. I'll get it. Learning comes out and I play it at home, but still I have to collect the loot now. Sure. It's a very weird compulsion. Yeah, no, I, I, I think, I mean, it's even like that for us whenever we're playing the uh, the daily builds, you know, because we, we make builds each day, and for a while in the uh, in the development process, you're going to have invalid gear, you know, or gear that's invalidated with every new build, but you still <laughs> agonize over what over the loot. I'll go ahead and grab it. Oh, okay. So we've been clap trapped. So right now, all um, we'll get massive da uh, damages, uh, damage bonus for melee. Okay, and I've got this big axe thing. Yep. Yeah, you've got your buzz axe right now. I chose the wrong time to use it though, right? <laughs> it's well, it's difficult to use it against the flying enemy. <laughs> well, I'm still going for it. I'm trying. Yeah, yeah. Well, you've got your arrows, so it's not, not impossible. Yeah, like I, I jumped up and meleeed one of the rapids. And, you know, I, I think I did like 50% of its, of its health in one, in one hit. Note to self use it in. <laughs> those circumstances. Well, I think that's that's part of the uh, the catch is playing as uh, of playing as claptrap is that um, it's it's randomized. So sometimes you'll get exactly what you want at just the right moment, and you'll save the day. Yeah. And and everybody will go, man, I'm really glad I have claptrap with. Me. And then sometimes you have meat unicycle for an enemy that's flying away from you. <laughs> Not that. Draw should be 
just about done. And so that's a Barbot. Um, Barbot is a, uh, is a claptrap that's in the surface of uh, Moxie. And um, he has like this outrageous accent. <laughs> um, but he's offering us um, essentially like, an opposite, uh, a different choice for this mission. Sort of like what we saw with the Torgo mission, where you can do, uh, you have more than one person you can turn in the mission to. Let's see what we get this time. Um, oh, the giant sugar off the right here. Minion trap. Oh good! Oh, so your minion trap is uh, essentially like a little uh, clap trap turret that will uh, fire a you know, uh, crap load of, of rockets off in a short period of time. Very powerful. Okay. Cool. It's basically like a like Axton's uh, Axton's turret. Yeah. It's fun just seeing what comes up. It's like oh, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Exactly. Exactly, and that's sort of the that's sort of the thing that, that the catch is that when you play as flapjack, you need to be flexible with your approach. Yeah. It fills up quite quickly, though. Yeah. Does it fill up quicker than the other characters? Would you say? Um, I I don't know. I, I believe it depends on where you put your skill points into. Yeah, you can, um, you can speed it up. I mean, if, if they are in niche, I have very quick uh, cooldown action skills because yeah. they're quite short duration. Mm -hmm. Um, whereas Clap Traps is a little bit longer and then World Bubbles is a bit longer again because they, they last for a, a much bigger period of time. It's entirely possible that one of us is wearing gear. That would speed it up also. Oh, okay. just want to keep using it. Awesome. That's, that's the whole idea. That's I'm going to use it. There's nobody around. I just want to see what I get. Light butt. Light butt, always a good one. Oh, is that the one that I got during the... Jill. James. There's nobody around, so we'll just dance together. Okay. Oh, we're in a few steeps. Oh. Tell you what, I think that you can take this seat, and I'll grab, it the other. I'll grab another ride. Are we heading back now? Is that what it is? Oh, yeah, okay. We've got another optional end in here. We can give it into Nurse Nina on the other. So you know the outcomes, which is the best one to do. Uh, I don't actually remember the difference to this one, do you, James? I think the shotgun's really good. But I mean, all all the gear is always is always good. Like we don't have special guns that are that are crap. You know, yeah. it's kind of about like yeah. about your preference style. Yeah. So let's see. Yeah, part of the reason it always takes me so long to pick a weapon is because often. There isn't objectively one that's better than another. Yeah, one. right. That's what causes the the heartache. Depends <laughs> on your other weapons or what skill points you've got. Like boosting different types of guns. Oh, Dan, you got back there really fast. I was just jumping. <laughs> <laughs> I got back with two. Oh, two. We, we wasted time with nice. vehicles, and you beat us all. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'm going to use the vehicles. I'm just going to keep just doing that. Well, the good thing about Clap Trap is. Um, he has his oxygen bar, obviously, but he won't just consume it over time because, mm -hmm. because he's a robot. He's a, he, ah. His is just reserved for his air boosts and things like that. I never noticed that. Yeah. But now you've pointed it out. Yeah. yeah, that does make a lot of so sense. It doesn't normally drain too quickly for the other characters, but Clap Trap just gets a little bit more. Uh, yeah. Now, Lee's ran into uh, Moxie's bar, so this is kind of a cool opportunity to kind of show that off. Uh, Moxie has a bar on Elpis called Moxie's Up Over, um, which is a bit, of a, it's a bit of a subtle joke on something. Um, but we, uh, when you come in here, you'll see that you know, there's a lot of cool stuff going on. Uh, Lee found the uh, found something new in the Borderlands, which is called Mox Tails, uh, which are basically these consumable buffs. Um, we kind of introduced these a little bit um, in the Tiny Tina DLC. The idea of having essentially uh, uh, temporary buffs. You can spend your moonstones on these in order to get a, a different stat boost for a short period of time. Uh, these last for 30 minutes. Choose one. Why not? There you go. Help. Let's see. The best drink can exist in this. Yeah, 
the cool things about these is um, since the, since they use moonstone and they're consumable, is you, you're never going to run out of something to you spend your moonstone on. There's, there's a big variety, so you've got the, the grinder moonstone grinds, you've got mock styles, you've got your ammo and um, backpack upgrades, of course. So you, you've really got to choose what you want to spend your moonstones on. Scan. Now, since you're really enjoying the double jump, which is awesome, um, I'm going to buy the uh, buy this one, the replicated uh, cauliflower, which will reduce um, O2 consumption by 33. Okay. percent So you should be able to get a couple more good jumps out of it before you need to get some O2. Can you use multiple ones at once? Yes. So uh, I could just. Uh, it's, it's just one at a time. So oh, if you buy a new one, it'll, it'll override. Oh, sorry. I, I thought you meant like you just grab a bunch at once. I'm like, yeah, you can, um, but. I think the O2 one would probably be a really good one for right now since you're doing a lot of jumps. Yeah. And you can actually see the, the timer for it down next to your oh, actual yeah, skill icon, so it lasts half an hour. Shows it for you there. And it persists through death and everything, so you don't need to worry too much about it. Now, the bar bot's in here, is Oh, there he is. What is that? There we go. Um, so, Lee is over at the slot machine. Again. <laughs> is that all you've done the entire time? <laughs> I need to talk to someone right now. <laughs> Dan, there is a, the bar bot is over here. I'm going to take a, fire a couple of shots at him. So if you want to turn in the mission to him. Oh, what'd you get? Customization? Uh, yeah, nice. uh, flat off hammer. I don't know if it's any good. For freight trap. So that's for me. <laughs> I'm a considerate friend. Cheers, nice. Glad you got your priorities right. Not sure what I'm going to do with this dumb drill. I'd like to blame all of my money pretty much. <laughs> Oh, that's a good check. Yeah, what are we doing? Let's just turn the mission. Crazy young whippersnappers. Oh, it's the two scoop shark gun. That one is a, it's a bit of fun. Let's see. It's worth, worth giving a try if you shoot some special projectiles on this one. What was it called again? The two scoops, T O O. Look at the top. Yeah. I just, I there you go. That's awesome. <laughs> All right, Dan, I think I'm ready for round two. Let's do this. Okay, in, in the bar, in the bar. <laughs> Man to box. Have you always been with the top pack? Or have I only just noticed it? Who am I fighting? <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Oh, God, I can't see anything. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> wow! Speaking of snowball fights, there is a uh, there's a gra grenade mod that you can get later in the game yeah. from another claptrap called the snowball that is ridiculously awesome. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna never it's never gonna get old. Good God! There's just ice everywhere. Shall we do another mission? Have we still got time? Yeah. Yeah. I actually think that we're just about out of time, unfortunately. Oh, that's yeah. a I know. I, I wanted know. to use that gun on actually something that wasn't a bar. Well, we can fight each other. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But, you know, if you can wait a few weeks, we can play online together and have some more fun. Yeah. That sounds good. Yeah, no, no, nobody can touch our gun, so. Let's do this. Right, big finale. Hang on, what's the score at the moment? Is it one on? Where are you? Oh wow! Did I shove you out of the uh, out of the arena? It's the knockback from the slam. Oh no! Oh, oh, oh! I think you're again. <laughs> Let's do this. I like the way the civilians, the, the people that live there, are just walking around like, yeah, this shit happens <laughs> yeah. every day. This is, this is everyday life in Concordia. Slammy. Slammy, Dan. Nice. Yeah, that never gets old. That's the T deal. I just love reloading that. Yes. I was playing with someone the other day that forgot that the TVR reload uses the entire magazine on it. And they're like, I'm out of ammo all the time. Like, 
like pace yourself with that one. Yeah. <laughs> That's the problem. It does F more damage as well. FPS, is, true FPS yeah. is these days to, like teach you to shoot and then reload, yeah. mm -hmm. which for the TV ones isn't a good idea. Yeah. yeah. The cool thing is with the TDO lasers is they'll, they'll explode, but they'll also shoot out shock beams at people that they go near. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're extra cool. Damn. Brilliant. And we're out of time, I, I, I do believe. Unfortunately, I was going to tell you to go grab Lee's gear from the, from the skeleton chest. Yeah. But we can say that. We can loot that next time. Brilliant. Thank you very much, guys. That was an absolute pleasure. Absolutely. No worries. Cheers. And uh, I'll get you next time. Awesome. <laughs>